liftoff. If Chandrayaan-2 is successful, India will be only the fourth country to land a spacecraft on the moon. India will become the first country in the world to land near the south pole of the moon. It really elevates the influence of the country. The other countries start taking you much more seriously than what they are doing right now. Landing is the trickiest part of the mission, and it will be a nerve-wracking moment for India's space agency, ISRO. Not everything has gone according to plan so far. Chandrayaan 2's first attempt to blast off in mid-July was aborted at the last minute due to a technical snag. It took off a week later. But if it can land, a rover will then explore the surface for water and minerals. Success would boost Prime Minister Narendra Modi's efforts to launch the country's first manned space mission by 2022. Space ho, technology ho. Be it space, be it technology, we have achieved new heights. We're happy that our Chandrayaan is moving speedily towards that part of the moon where no one has ever reached. India has developed a reputation for its low-cost space missions. The Chandrayaan-2 moon mission costs about $145 million. That's considered relatively cheap as far as space missions go. But there are some people who question whether India should be spending money on space when it has issues to tackle such as poor infrastructure and poverty. Analysts say developing India's space sector can have benefits for its citizens. It could allow the government to track weather patterns, which would help farmers, for example. And the industry would create jobs. Nobody knows what is the benefit of this investment and what is the benefit of this uh, expenditure, government expenditure, our tax payment. So it is a useless thing. I will be there uh, in front of the TV seeing our Chandrayaan uh, landing on the moon and clapping and other things. It's a great occasion. Even if people aren't sure, if India can pull off this moon mission, the country's space sector will be poised for a boost.